You know, think of what Amos, the prophet Amos said so long ago. This is pro- pro- Amos chapter 8. He said, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They will go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. The question is, how can this happen when there are so many Bibles? How can this happen when there are so many preachers? How can this happen when there are so many people spreading the word, quote unquote, on on radio and television? How can that happen? Well, because Satan has tactics. Always. Sun Tzu had tactics. He talked about his, the tactics of war. Mm-hmm. Von Clausewitz, he talked about the tactics of war. Mm-hmm. The enemy will do everything in his power to disarm us, either by removing the scriptures, discrediting the scriptures, or changing the scriptures. And that's what we're going to take a look at. But before we start to take a look at that portion of the study, it would do us really well to start by visiting a few other scripture verses. You need to understand this before we go into that, all right? Jesus said, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Matthew 7, 15. Peter said, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. 2 Peter 2.1 John, the Apostle John said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. 1 John 4.1 And Paul said, For such men are slaves, not of our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. Mm -hmm. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. Romans 16, 18. The reason I'm saying this is because, as we saw, we need to be very conscious of the fact that the enemy will attack not only from the outside, but from within the church. Just as Paul wrote so long ago, For if one comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, Or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, that was verse 4 and 13 to 15, right? So they're all saying, you know, this attack is not going to come from just the pagans, the wh- wh- put in a, fill in the blank, the Hindus, the Islam, the whatever. This attack is going to come from within, the wheat and the tares, all right? So, as the Apostle, Paul, the, the Apostle John said, we're to test the spirits, right? I just read that. Mm-hmm. And to do that, just like the Bereans did. You know the Bereans? Yes. Okay? More noble Acts, minded. Acts 17, 11. Mm-hmm. Now, these were more noble minded than those in Thessalonica. For they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Check it out. Check it out. Check out what I'm saying. I I say this over and over and over. I don't ask you to take my word for anything. I ask you to take God's word for everything. Test what I say. If it it is not the word, turn the switch off. Go turn the switch off. Don't come back. Tell all your friends and and neighbors, don't you watch this because it's a lie. Mm -hmm. But if what I'm saying is the truth, now you're responsible for it. 
That's right. If you've heard the truth, you're responsible. And from whom much has been given, much is required. All right. And I, and I feel led, I feel the need to make note of one other fact, just in case the devil or one of his minions happens to be reading or listening to this Bible study and has forgotten what Jesus said, it is finished. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God <clears throat> stands forever. Isaiah 48. Forever. Forever. And just by the way, devil, Jesus Christ, who is the Word, the Word made flesh who dwelt among us, is the same yes. yesterday, today, today and, and yes, forever. forever. So take that, you dummy. Okay. So the Word of God is not in danger. <coughs> we are when we get separated from it. That's right. Don't ever think that the Word is in danger. God's Word, it's settled in heaven. And it just reminded me of when the little study we were doing this morning in Galatians how Paul warned the Galatians about um, receiving a False, different... A different gospel. Yeah, yes. a distorted gospel. A distorted, a different or distorted... Alice was talking about, we do a, a Bible study here every morning, and we were doing a study talking out of Galatians. And that's what he says. And he said, I don't care who it is. That's right. If it's an, an apostle, an angel, if somebody comes along bringing a different gospel, let him be accursed. This is serious, yes, serious is. stuff. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I've taken an oath and have confirmed it that I will keep your righteous laws. I've suffered much, preserved my life, O Lord. According to your word